Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Look, check this out. I've received a question uh, from somebody who's uh, interested in knowing about a certain specific situation. They've made an investment and they're looking to kind of exit. So I'm going to talk about the entire situation that they're in right now. I'm then going to talk about what used to be previously open options for investors in Dubai. Uh, I'm going to talk about the current situation. Uh, what is the developer's view in all of this and then perhaps a few solutions uh, for yourself okay however before I start the video I'm going to say very clearly I'm not a lawyer neither trained nor practicing this is simply based off my 14 plus years of experience in real estate negotiations contracts sometimes common sense as well basically so they're not loyally advised if you want Proper lawyerly advice, no matter where you are, seek a good lawyer. Um, you can always hit me up on WhatsApp and I can let you know who that is. Hey, before we go further, hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon so that I get encouraged. My kids see my subscriber count going up and then they tell me, Dad, you are kind of cool because you have now more subscribers. Okay, let me get into the question, okay? I'm going to let the question play. If my uh, video editor can actually do that, we'll bleep out the uh, pertinent details. We won't identify the questioner because I think the name is in there. But if he's able to do that, I'm going to put the question in there and let you hear, hear it out. Let's go. Fahd, as alaikum. How are you? Fahd, I want to know about one information regarding my brother. My brother, Mr. Fahd, he invested in an off-plan project last year and um, he already made 20 percent payment the dld payment and the good fees now currently he is unable to make the payments because uh, he is in a financial crisis situation because of the COVID 19 so now he wants to back out of the project so dear what is the uh, situation here suppose if you want to back out from the project and want to stop paying the developer for the off plan which is immoral in this case so how much the developer uh, how much the money the developer is going to return and how much it's the developer going to retain the money and how much this process is going to take this complete process so he bought the plan project but he's unable to make the payment for the off plan he wants to back out of the project so normally what is the law and because you have a great amount of experience in the uh, market for dubai so can you please guide me okay welcome back so essentially what the questioner is stating is that they have made an investment with a developer. So I'll name the developer. The developer is Imar. Imar is one of the largest developers in Dubai. They've got 55,000 uh, apartments, townhouses, villas, commercial uh, offices delivered all across the world. They're a premium developer. They are the developers behind Burj Khalifa, which is the tallest tower in the world, and also downtown Dubai, which is an A-grade master community, okay? A very good developer generally always tries to do best by its investors, okay? Essentially speaking, they've invested 20% in one particular development. I don't know the complete details on which development they've done, but it's kind of like 20%. Uh, essentially speaking, in Dubai, what you do is when you, the way you invest in a property is you do a reservation form or an, uh, I think they call it, every developer calls it slightly different, but it's sort of like the initial, hey, I want to buy this and I want to put a deposit down. And then you put a deposit of 20,000 or a few, maybe 100,000 dirhams, depends on how much it is. You, you put that down and then the developer prepares based on that and your information, something called a sales and purchase agreement, okay? When the sales and purchase agreement gets issued, you essentially are then going to sign as per your obligations on the sales and purchase agreement and the developer obviously countersigns that what are their obligations and the sales and purchase agreement has all the pertinent details that binds obligates legally the seller the developer in this case and the buyer it shows the price that the buyer is going to pay any payment plan that the developer is going to uh, that the buyer is going to abide by uh, it sh shows when the developer is going to be delivering if the buyer is late in his payments, what are the remedial actions, so on and so forth. Now, in this particular scenario, and, and then it goes on to the, the unit getting registered in the land department, uh, which shows that you are the owner of this unit, even though it's still off plan under construction, but you're the actual owner, so on and so forth, right? 
Now, essentially speaking, the SPA is kind of like a con it's not like kind of like a it is a contract that binds you to certain obligations and binds the developer to certain obligations. Now, in this scenario, as this person explains, the buyer has run into some financial difficulties. We wish him the best and is not able to continue with the payment plan. And what the government essentially did, um, I'll, I'll, I'll caveat this now, and then I'll go into experiences from 2008, 2012, and then the current scenario, and what might be some likely options for this gentleman, okay? And now, again, I'm not a lawyer. I'm just discussing my experience. You need to go and talk to a lawyer, okay? Look, uh, watch one of my videos to see what happened between the 2003 to 2008 period, how developers essentially... Um, Generally speaking, it was the developers who were very greedy and were at fault, okay? They came into Dubai, they saw opportunity, took a lot of money and then kind of ran away, okay? The Dubai government picked up the pieces and brought the industry to where it is today uh, with good regulation, uh, transparency as much as they've been able to implement, good practices, etc., etc., okay? Essentially what the government did as law was to state that if the developer has built the project to a certain stage, then they have certain rights to the buyer's funds, right? Because it doesn't make sense if you make the sale to the buyer and collect, let's say, 20%, but the developer has not done any development, and the buyer deserves to get his funds back, right? All 20% of it. But let's say that the buyer paid 20% and then the developer completed the complete building, which is 100% of the project, but the buyer is unable to pay the balance payments of 80%. Well, is the developer at fault or is the buyer now at fault? So in this scenario, what the government did was essentially protect the developer that the developer at this stage, if they've done, let's say 60 to 80% of development, they can keep or retain 40% of the buyer's funds that they've paid. Right, but if the developers done like less uh, development, then they're entitled to less funds, so on and so forth. So essentially speaking, the government still in the rule or the law that it uh, published allowed for the buyer to kind of move out of the deal and get a refund, but only if they've paid more. But essentially speaking, most deals that have happened is the developers have launched projects and they've asked for very little down payments and most of the payments are at handover, right? And that's the scenario in here as well. So the buyer is asking like, if they've paid 20%, can, what do they do? Can they get a refund? How do they work around this situation? Now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna recount a few scenarios for everybody's benefit. And so what it does, it opens up your mind to possible solutions that you might consider instead of just losing all 20%. Now, worst case scenario is you lose all your 20%, Best case scenario is you get all your 20% back and a middle, in, middle case scenario is you get some of it back, okay? I'll give you an example, my personal example, okay? 2008, this is the second property, uh, no, rather the first property I ever invested in with my partner and it was with Emar. It could have been the first or second, I don't remember. It was with Emar. Emar had launched a tower, I think it was Claren 3. We went in there, we bought at 5,000 dirhams per square foot, but the, the moment when we bought, the market was kind of like about to tank, right? Lehman Brothers had collapsed uh, and you know, we bought this. I went on vacation to get married, came back, market collapsed. We had already made, I think 30% or something of, of that uh, amount payment on this uh, huge apartment in downtown. And now we were stuck, right? My partner lost his job. We lost our consultancy. Our real estate business was going down, etc., etc., etc. We couldn't technically make the balance payments to Imar. Fine. We went, we spoke to Imar, explained our situation, and he said, look, this is the situation. Now, given that the global financial crisis, the way it kind of like took place, within three months, that was like, recall, recall the current situation like a pandemic. It was mass mayhem that time right 2008 october november december by january you like in february by february everybody knows like things are really bad so what we started doing was we started talking to emar right we started telling them look we don't have the funds to continue with the payments what do you intend to do sector etc etc et et now this is 2008 okay essentially speaking things kept going on and 2009 things got worse and 
Imar decided in their wisdom, and I think it was a wise thing to do, they decided that these two towers, Clarence 3 and Clarence 4, if I remember correctly, is not worth it for them to build them. Okay, so they ended up not building. What they allowed to do is, if you had bought in these towers, is you could take your funds half a million, whatever you had paid them, and then apply to one of Imar's other inventory or assets and buy in those um, projects. Or what they would do is, essentially it was a credit note, right? That note of half a million dirham that you've invested with Imar is a note that you can buy anything else with Imar. They weren't going to refund the money back to us at that stage, okay? Uh, that was clear. What did happen in the Dubai market at that time was a parallel industry called the credit notes industry developed, okay? Anybody who had paid to Imar and Nikhil, one of the government developers who were essentially still here in the market, still doing their best to safeguard the investors' interest, what they ended up doing is they allowed us to sell our credit notes to other buyers of Imar who could then take that amount and apply it to any of their properties, right? Because we didn't have enough other money or other funds to buy more property with Imar. So I still remember that we sold our credit note to, I think it was some American uh, investor who had bought a couple of properties with Imar and still had the funds to continue making payments. She essentially acquired our credit note at 60%. So you're getting 60 cents on the dollar. I think it was 60 cents or 50 cents, but at least we got some money out of it when we were happy because at that stage, we would pretty much considered that we'd lost all of our money, okay? So essentially a parallel industry developed, it was called the credit note industry, and we were able to sell it to this young lady or old lady, I don't know who it was, so this American lady, and she went on to apply that money to Imar, and we kind of like came out of a win-win, and in the end we came to a win-win situation, right? Imar doesn't have to refund us money, this lady, takes 60 cents on the, buys our note, let's say it's half a million, but pays us only 200,000 uh, dirhams or uh, whatnot, but gets to apply the entire half a million towards Imar. So kind of like Imar, we're all kind of losing a little bit, except the lady who bought uh, that, uh, but we're all kind of winning out of it as well. We could say that she's also losing out because she might be paying into an investment that she bought at a very high price, but she chose to continue, right? But she's going to make that money back much later, okay? So that's what happened to us. Now, I'm going to talk about another story that happened to a very dear friend of mine in 2012-13, I think, okay? I still remember I was having dinner at my uh, one of my family members' house, and my brother approaches me, and he asked me, Hey, listen, Father, my friend's about to buy seven apartments in this particular development somewhere. And I said, look, I told my brother, I said, don't ask him not to do it unless he's got money for all the seven apartments until completion, right? Because it's so speculative. You can kind of go broke on such an investment. He said, no, it's an amazing investment because the developer only wants 20% down payment and then 80% is on handover. Obviously, it was very speculative because he, they assumed that they're going to be able to just flip the apartments when the time comes in about a year and a half, two years time. Fast forward about two years, the developer is ready and has now delivered 100% of the community and the building, etc. And now they call my friend and say, listen, seven apartments, you got to pay the balance 80%. My friend's got no money, right? So we get into a negotiation scenario with the developer and we say, look, they've got no money. They can't pay the rest. Uh, market had tanked badly, right? Like, no, I wouldn't say badly, but by 15, 16, market started going down. So properties that you had bought in 2013, market had turned so fast that you couldn't go to the bank and get a mortgage or finance it, get it valued at the initial value that you were paying. So regardless of the situation, you kind of stuck. But uh, credit to the developer, they were willing to work with the buyers, right? They would say, okay, you know, if the bank's going to evaluate it at this price, maybe you can pay us some post-dated checks, which is in Dubai, like a bank check, and then you can pay us over a period of two or three years. Essentially, they're willing to work with them. Now, the best solution for my friend would have been, uh, I think they paid about 2 million or 2.2 million, consolidate the values that they had paid on seven apartments into two apartments, and just give my friends those, and the developer would be free to just resell the other apartments. But you guys have to also look at things from the developer's perspective, right? They've sold these seven apartments. 
right? And now the market's down. Had you not taken the seven apartments and had you not taken, had you only taken two for which you had enough money for, they could have sold these seven to other people who would now then continue paying the developers because the developers already put all their money in. So you would have to appeal to the developer's good naturedness to actually do good by you. But they're not obliged, if you really look at it, they're not obliged morally and they're not obliged contractually to help you out because you were greedy. I, I use this word greedy. We're all greedy to an extent, okay? I accept that. But I'm using it with a little bit of a reservation. The developer's not in this game to help you out because you were unfortunately overstretching your budget and you did not take into account, with all due respect, that you might not have a job. Right, etc., etc., etc. So the developer ended up doing nothing. My friend ended up losing all their money, 2.2 million, because once the developer completes 100%, they've got the rights to go to the Dubai Land Department, which is the main organization in Dubai, to cancel your unit and resell it, right? Because listen, you signed a contract and that obligated you to certain payments at a certain point. The developer signed a contract to deliver the building, which they've done, you know. Things kind of didn't go your way, so sorry about that. Uh, so this was another story. Now, okay, what's your current scenario? How would you work this out? Here's my suggestion. Again, I'm not a lawyer. I would say be open, keep communication lines open, right? So assess worst case scenario. Now, here's the thing. A lot of investors, like other humans, can at sometimes be stubborn, right? I've been stubborn myself, right? Because sometimes you don't want to see the writing on the wall and you want to continue seeking for solutions, which is good. I think you should, right? Be creative. However, take into account worst case scenario. Worst case scenario is that you're going to lose all your money. That's the worst case scenario. Again, I'm not a lawyer. Um, best case scenario is you can get all your money refunded to you. Middle case scenario is you get part of it refunded, etc., etc. Here's what I would suggest. You would work with the developer very closely and submit documents to them, in my personal opinion only, that shows that you've lost your job, you're unable to make the payments, etc., etc. Okay? Uh, we are not in an emergency crisis situation as yet. Uh, what's happened with this corona thing, it's only about three months old, right? Four months old, let's say. Retail magnets are laying off staff now. Uh, Emirates is cutting salaries and laying off people, etc., etc. But the real dust might settle in six months to seven months, right? Uh, here's the thing. Good developers like Emar, etc., they're not going to be jumping the gun under the current circumstances to cancel your units immediately and say, listen, if, you've not, if you're not going to be able to make the next payment, we're just canceling your unit and we're putting it back in the market to resell it to somebody else. They're probably going to work with you. If you're late on your payments, they'll probably apply fines to that. Um, and God forbid, if things worsen, we hope not, then maybe they come up with unique scenarios to help individuals so that you don't lose out on all your money. Other scenarios could be that you could sell your unit, which I currently think would be highly unlikely because regardless of what the current scenario is, the price you probably bought from the developer, the developer pro is, is, you can probably buy it cheaper today from the resale market or directly from the developer in terms of longer payment plans, uh, extra um, promotions that the developer is putting in. So there's all sorts of other things that the developers are doing that wouldn't make your product easily sellable but i'm not saying it can't be done probably can be done um you could at the stage i'm going to advise that i'm going to actually advise against this when the project is completed like um let's say the project gets completed essentially speaking if you're a dubai resident UAE resident you can get a 75 percent mortgage if you're gainfully employed on the property okay now i don't know when the project is going to get completed if you can still get that mortgage, if you're still employed, if the central bank is going to change some of those conditions. But essentially speaking, you could think about it like this and say, hey, listen, I'll pay 20%, I'll pay another 5%. Maybe Imar will listen to me. If there's no other payments that need to be made at the time of handover, I'll just get the mortgage in. Now, here's the thing. Personally speaking, I don't believe in the whole mortgage scenario. I think it's a liability that you take on that then sometimes screws you up a little bit further, right? So think about it like this. You took on a liability that you're now unable to service. 
Now, instead of exiting it gracefully and sometimes losing money as well, you're going to take on a bigger liability, right? Because let's say if you walk away from this, I'm going to talk about how Emar can still come to you for more money or the developer can. But if you walk away, money lost, lesson learned. But instead of walking away, money lost, lesson learned, what you choose to do is you take on an extra liability from the bank which is the 75% mortgage, which now you owe the bank. So you now owe 75% to a bank, conventional or Islamic, in this country. If you default, A, your property will get obviously confiscated, etc., etc. It goes into auction. But we don't have bankruptcy laws here yet. We've got a system which still you could end up, you know, paying for it with, with in heavy amounts in different ways. Again, I don't want to get into that. That's not the subject of this video. But the point I'm trying to make is who in their right mind takes on a liability, then gets stuck, and then trying to escape from that liability takes on a larger liability for a longer period. Investors do that, and people who want to make money do that, and that's fine, but you got to really think about this. Uh, I, talk, I talked about selling, it might not be an option right now. Last but not the least, because of Dubai law, the developer can claim 40% if they complete 100%, okay? So you also have to now, okay, last but not the least, let me cover what the developer's situation is, okay? You have to think about it like this. The developer launched a master project, let's say with 300 townhouses or 1,000 townhouses. Fine, I understand if you bought and now you're in a bad situation where you've lost your job, work with the developer, maybe they come up with a better plan for you, okay? That's not for me to say. And again, I gotta repeat this, I'm not a lawyer, so you gotta go and seek lawyerly advice. But think about it from the developer's perspective, okay? They've got these townhouses, which are like 1,000. There's 250 were bought by people who couldn't really afford to make the final payments or who speculated or who didn't who took on liabilities more than they could afford the developer is still on the hook to deliver a thousand townhouses and they're on the hook to build a community center that services a thousand townhouses and they're on the hook to deliver a nursery a school a mosque the roads the walkways the electricity center, like the uh, substation for electricity, the telecom towers, the sewage system, they're on the hook to deliver all of that for a thousand townhouses. Because the 250 that might default, and I hope that doesn't happen, would like to get their 20% back, but what the developer does is has taken into account that all of the people are gonna pay so that they can make enough money to be able to deliver those services and get that community being a thriving community, right? So when a speculator or an investor chooses to walk away, know that it's a disservice to the contract that you've signed and to all the other people who've invested in that community, okay? Now, I understand things happen, things sometimes go wrong, which is why I'm saying sit with the developer and make amends and try to work something out and speak to a good lawyer who can look through the SBA, the Sales and Purchase Agreement, and perhaps advise you in a better way. But this is my experience. At this scenario, in this stage, I would be the first person going to the developer and speaking to them and trying to understand what options they might have for you. You know, Just like how landlords have uh, reduced rents, perhaps developers will also, in the next few months, come up with innovative solutions that help you be able to survive the situation and continue with the payments. Look, if you like this, press the bell icon, press the subscribe button. I think you hit the subscribe button, press the bell icon. And if you want questions, hit me up. I'm happy to answer them. Catch you on the flip side. Bye for now.